what is our prize? And we hear the dogs, and those are the underdogs. Welcome I to- I didn't kill them. I swear I didn't kill them. <laughs> I cued them, Gareth. I cued them. What is <laughs> up, guys? Welcome to the underdog talk. There's just something about the underdog, but today the apex predator is in the building. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh, I didn't even- Okay, I like- You're coming up with some creative things already, sir. I love it. Mr. Carrie's body. I'm getting hungry, Teddy. So, <laughs> hey, and you are getting hungry on and off the stage. Is what you've done in the 2023 season was remarkable. And 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 you know, I think some big things are coming your way. I can feel it. I can feel it. My crystal ball. Now, let me ask you a first question. Ten words to de- yeah, ten words to describe the emotion of. of Jumping from seventh to fourth place in the two twelve, Mister Olympia. Uh wow! Ten words or less? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you can take your time. Okay. Um, I earned every little bit of that moment in December. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and, and you did. And you did, sir. And obviously, wow. You, you, I don't want to say you brought your best because your best is still coming. I believe that. Your fans believe that. You believe that, obviously. But in a stacked lineup with some big dogs, you came out to compete. Yeah. And it was a cloak. You know, you were in the first call out. You were there to play. And you really did bring your A game. So, I mean, what did you do different in – obviously this prep and this off season to jump from seventh place to fourth place, a, a huge victory right there alone. You should be proud of yourself. Um, so what do you do different in training? If you did anything at all, as far as training goes, nothing really changed there. Um, but it was more on the recovery side of things that I really took focus and, you know, it, it's it's easy to get caught up in, you know, hey, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. But sometimes you got to really just, you know, apply pressure and then back off and allow time for things to heal properly. So there was a lot of that from 22 to 23 competition year. And, you know, my body ultimately rewarded me for it because when it came time to show out, I wasn't tired. If there was another show post Olympia that I could do, I probably would have done it. You know, I had I had plenty in the tank. You know, um, unfortunately, the look that we wanted for that night didn't really, you know, it didn't it didn't happen. But we looked good enough to be in the conversation. But you know, uh, we know going forward what we got to correct. And um, when I say we, I mean I. You know. <laughs> Um, I know what I got to correct to really nail that mark and, you know, trial and error. These things are trial and error and you have to have immaculate timing. So with, with, with the knowledge that I gathered over the past year, you know, cause, uh, a loss isn't really a loss. It's just a way to a victory, you know? So I'm going to take all that knowledge that I gained this past year and apply that to, you know, coming out the, the crown winner this year. I love it. <laughs> and hey, hey, I love it. I absolutely love it because, you know, uh, uh, adversity is based on being able to bounce back and, and take those knocks on the chin and, and become better. You know, that's what makes a champion in my eyes. And champions are, are bodybuilders. I mean, bodybuilders are champions, vice versa. And, and I love that mindset of, hey, I can still be better. You know, I can still be better. The best apex predator has not come to stage. And it's interesting because we've heard a lot of people really didn't nail that peak look that they wanted this Mr. Olympia, whether that be either it was too late or timing or, you know, just other things. Um, You know, now this can be 10 words or more. What was your experience like at the Mr. Olympia this year with, with the fan meeting the fans and, you know, backstage and all that? What, What was that all like? This year, more so than any other year, I, I really, I drank it in, you know, it it was, the moment was bigger than me and I was 
a fan caught up in something that I had to compete in. So, you know, I have all my favorite bodybuilders around me. And then I'm like, damn, I got to compete against these guys. How cool is this? And to boot, it's like, how many people really get to say that? In addition to that, you know, I, I've acquired quite the fan base in the process of 22 to 23. And, you know, the people that follow me, man, you know, all, all the love in the world to them because they don't have to. But, dude, they show me so much support. These are the same people that buy, buy the shirts that, you know, have my logo on them. And, you know, they just they reach out to me. They check up on me and see how I'm doing. They, they push me when I don't have it, you know. And, uh, you know, shout outs to them, man, because, you know, you get to a point where, there's only so much you can do for yourself. And then you see how you're affecting others. And I mean, dude, that shit is just like, it, it's a huge thing. You know, you don't really realize what you're doing at the time, but then somebody will come up to you and be like, dude, you know, I, I watched a podcast with you and Teddy and, you know, um, dude, you said some real earth shattering shit in there that really got me through. And I'm like, whoa, you know, <laughs> I was just talking about breakfast. You know, it'll be something so simple. But, you know, if it's anything that somebody could take from me to apply to their day, dude, it's, it's, yo, because I, I don't do it for that. I just do it because I love it. But yeah, you know, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with that. And, you know, my first thought was, you know, I think you're a great advocate for, for bodybuilding, period. We just had Keon Pearson on last week. And I think you and him are really great advocates. And I don't say that often because of the messages you bring. You're down to earth and you want, you love, you love the sport of bodybuilding. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's, it's my lifeblood. Um, took me a while to come to it, but man, you know, it, it happens when it's time and it was my time to find it. And I just love everything about the sport. You know, the, the ability to unearth traits of myself that I didn't know existed all by applying, applying force, you know, just it, it's being under the pressure of, you know, a few hundred pounds or whatever. And you really just, you, you assess, well, how, how big is the fight in this dog, you know? And I was actually, uh, I, I learned the phrase a few days ago, Pressure makes diamonds. Apparently, that's how diamonds are made. And pressure does make diamonds. Um, uh, hello to the dogs. Right as well. And um, yeah, they, they, they apparently know that pressure makes diamonds before me. So they're pretty intelligent dogs. <laughs> but obviously, you know, when, when Keon was on the podcast, I was talking to him about the 212 and kind of the direction of where it's going. Obviously, you know, when you think of bodybuilding, you think of 212, classic, open. Now, to you, where do you see the direction of 212 going? Do you see it getting more hype, getting more popularity? Obviously, you have names like you and Carrot, or well, you and and uh, Keon and, and yeah. you know Angel, and some really really big advocates for 212, and obviously Sean Clarita. Um, you know, yeah. do you see more hype coming to 212 and what it deserves? Well, I gotta say. As I'm biased, dude. You know, I, I want to always see the good in it. But, you know, um, regretfully, I see less two show, 212 shows on the calendar. And, you know, that, that always warrants concern, you know, from a person who competes in the division. Yep. But, you know, it's still at the Olympia level. I think the talent in the 212 is arguably the best that it's been, you know, and I... I well, hey, I'm getting a lot of fans from this. So, you know, I, for me, it's all uphill, right? Yeah. You know, so I think internationally, 212 bodybuilding may have a bigger draw than it does. Inside. But, you know, um, hey, I just, I just hope that it continues to grow and thrive. But I can't say for certain where it's actually headed, you know, um, until we're on the same night as the open, I would say that we're kind of stuck in, in, in a box for now, but you know, hopefully they, uh, 
you know, they give us a little bit more shine and, you know, we, we make, um, you know, one big, big night of it and keep it all bodybuilding, man. You know, 212 is bodybuilding and, you know, we suffer just like the rest of them, probably more so because we got to make weight. And in the off season, we're just as heavy as the open guys. And now let me ask you the million dollar question. Have you ever thought about going up to the open or is 212 the division you want to conquer? Well, listen, I don't want to sound like I have a Napoleon complex or anything, but I want to conquer all, baby. I want to conquer it all. So I, I do want, you know, my two 212 Olympia titles at least, at least, you know. Um, but I, I, can, I can definitely see me winning a few open shows. Mm -hmm. yep. 100%. I, I, will, I will make that happen. That is on the bucket list. And I, I promise you when it's time, we will be at our best. Uh, you know, how much I weigh? I don't know. I could be two, 212, you know? I'd be 202. But I plan on bringing one of my best looks to the open because I've never been able to, um, you know, kind of uh, kind of eat freely. Uh, not to say that these guys get to eat freely, but I, I do love the look that I bring when I'm more full and don't really have to, you know, control the calories as much. Yeah. And, you know, I think we're seeing it more and more. And we had one of our good friends on the podcast. I'm wearing his shirt, which he gave me. Derek Lunsford obviously just won yeah. the Olympia as a 212 champion showing that, hey, and Hadi, Hadi was a 212er, right, as well? Hadi was 212. William was 212. Derek, of course. Yep. Um, who else we got? Tonio. Tonio yes. was 212. Yes. Yes, um, and I, I think I'm forgetting a few other names, but they might be more international guys that, you know, compete in Europe and Asia. But, I, I mean, the talent in the 212 pool, so yes. dangerous. I mean, talk about a guy like Keon even. Um, and look at what Sean did. <laughs> you know, Sean was up there with a guy that was legit a hundred pounds heavier than him. Big Rami. You know? Yeah, he went up against Rami. You know, that's the giant killer for real, man. Yeah. You know, so shout out to all my two twelve guys that won a venture that way. Oh, um Nathan. Nathan, Nathan. um Diasha. I forget. No, not Nathan Diasha. Um was open. Uh, Nathan, he was two twelve. He finished, he finished fifth in 2022. Oh, God. Oh, I, I, I don't know why I'm forgetting his name. But oh, Nathan, so. um, Nathan. Yes, you can look him up. Nathan. He's another 212 guy that, that uh, ventured out into the Open. Uh, Flex Lewis was scheduled to go into the Open, and he would have been a problem, as we all know. But he did you know, hang up the posing trucks. Yeah, and I think that just shows the competitive level of 212, just right just right there. And I think indirectly, Derek winning the Open shows that 212ers are here to play. And, and, and I, I almost, I hate saying this, but it's almost like 212 is the underdog when it shouldn't be. And that's yeah. a little upset. Yeah, no, you hit the nail on the head. You hit the nail on the head. Um you know, uh, I guess we could be called the ugly stepsister of, of bodybuilding, you know, um, but we still do our thing, you know. So, I, I mean, I, I'll go ahead and put any 212 guy in an open lineup right now because there's so much dense mass on these guys in the 212 division. You see pictures and it really doesn't do them justice, you yeah. know. You you know, I, I'm a big fan of just his overall freakishness is uh, Jordan Janowitz. You know, he's, yeah, he's a massive 212 guy. And he comes down, he's 212, and, um, yeah, dude, he's one of the biggest guys in the division. You know, you got a guy like uh, Oleg. Oleg's another monster. Yep. You know, unreal density, unreal size on a 212, you know, bodybuilder. And we're forgetting about another advocate of the 212 who, again, has been on the podcast and can bring it in the open, and that's Kamal, 
who is a 212 champion oh, yeah. as well. He, 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 I think he's done open as well, and he can really – I know he took the year off, obviously. and um, But, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a well, day. He, he took the year off from Mr. Olympia. He won Masters Olympia. Oh, he did? I thought he, he – okay. Okay. I thought he had a yeah. family event where he took, took the focus away from the Olympia. No, he won Masters Olympia a couple weeks prior okay. and decided he – going to compete in in the open or the 212 at this year's olympia okay yeah he he obviously brings it so congrats on him i actually didn't even know that um i know i was uh following the masters because we had um uh the jamaican tank uh who was uh in the masters yeah. yep Phil, play hard. Phil. yes he's been on the podcast and I, I think he did actually no he didn't do the Masters so he could focus on the open and he i mean i was just impressed at I think he was like fit. I don't want. I don't want to say his age wrong, but I mean, just oh, man, he he's an impressive to be able to keep eating in the open at that age. I was like, hats off to him. I thought he was in. I don't want to say he's in his. I think he's in his fifties. I think he was fifty three. He, he's fifty. Fifty three. Yeah. Yeah, that says a lot, man. Yeah, that's you know. It. This was this was once thought to be a young man's game. We're we're slowly seeing otherwise, you know. And, and that's what I love about bodybuilding. And it took me so long so long to realize that muscle maturity is so important in this sport because Kamal yeah. is Kamal Kamal is old too. Uh, he's an older uh, competitor as well. I don't want to I don't want to say his age because I don't know it, but I do know he's in his. 40s. No, Kamal is fifty. He's fifty three. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, Kamal is 53, and, I mean, from the neck down, he looks like a teenager, a jack teenager. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah, you know, so shout-outs to him, man. I mean, I'm creeping up on him. I'm 41, going to be 42 pretty soon, and, uh, you know, I'm fighting a good fight, man. It feels good to go up against a guy like Keon and know that he's in his 20s, and, I'm, you know, it's still a problem for him. And uh, I think, you know, I was talking to Key the other day. I think this might be the year that I take him. I take him out. You know, I mean, um, not out of the top three, but you know, um, all friendly competition. That's 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 my dog. But when we're on stage, nothing's yeah. safe. You know. Mm -hmm. and, and he was saying the same thing. I was talking to him about you know competing against you guys, and he's like, I mean, off off stage, you know, we're the guys. On stage, I'm coming for their neck. They're coming for my neck. We're all coming for each other's neck. There's no playing around. You see, you see competition in my eyes, and um, you know, obviously, I can't wait to see what you bring in 2024. And I do have to ask, what did you learn about yourself in, in prep this year? Obviously, and I'm sure a very unique prep, and in a prep that turned out to do pretty well. Obviously, you didn't nail the head or nail the nail on the hit head. the nail, hit the nail, on hit the, the nail. Head. Yeah, hit. Thank you. In terms of what you wanted to look at, obviously the final, but you looked remarkable. And um, so, with that, what did you learn about yourself during prep? Whether that be something like a slogan you you kind of had that kept you going, or you know something that kept you going. Well, I, I give myself an ultimatum of sorts, mm -hmm. and this is nothing new. But this year, I definitely doubled down on the on the sentiment, and it it just it's simple. So I have no choice. You know, um, I'm here. You have thousands of people out there. I have no choice but to perform at my best. You know, I'm not going to let the people that came from miles and miles or even different countries to support me down. So, you know, I have no choice but, you know, to give them the best that I could give them at that time. So, you know, I, I really reinforced that this year. I put all, you know, distractions to the side. And I just brought the best me that I could bring at that time, you know, and, uh, you know, the people liked it. You know, I think that going forward, um, yeah, man, that, that's, that's probably going to be something that's cemented in my brain. I have no choice, but I'm not going to wait till the Olympia to really tap into that. Every, every workout. Every every meal, I have no choice but to get this down. You know, every rest day, I have no choice but to shit my ass down. Yeah, and if you think bodybuilding's easy, underdog talk, I mean, 
I think it's the hardest sport in the world. And I get to talk to some of the hard, best athletes in the world. And, you know, bodybuilding to me is just another sport in itself. I mean, man. And Whether well, you were a sport or not, Teddy, this is one of the hardest. Disregard the bodybuilding component. Dude, dieting as an adult with free will is one of the hardest things a human being can do. I don't care what you play. I don't care how many punches you take. Go ahead. Try and restrict calories. I'll see how long you can last. You know what I mean? It, it's a tough thing. It's, it's very, it, it's, a, it's a test of character, test of will, because, you know, it's like the donkey and the carrot. <laughs> you know, you always want to go after it. You know, and that's, that's what food does to us. It, it taps into our pleasure centers. So who wants to deprive themselves of pleasure willingly, right? So that's why I feel it's, it's the hardest thing to do as a free-thinking adult. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. I mean, again, the pleasure that food brings, as you mentioned, is second to none. Obviously, there's a few other things, but, you know, we all... Yeah, yeah. Let's keep yeah. it PG. Keep it PG. <laughs> We'll keep it. <laughs> we'll keep it G. We'll keep it G. But um, yeah, I totally agree on that, and I think it's it's a really it, it's a mentally hard sport, a mentally hard activity, whatever you want to call it. Comes down to it, it, it you have to be the and the Olympians, and even those amateurs are are some of them. I want to say it, some of the mentally toughest individuals out there. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And, you know, we only touched on one, one brick of, of the building mm -hmm. because when you talk about discipline and then the variables that you have to deal with in the process of a prep, yep. that's enough to break anybody, yep. you know? So it, it really shows how strong your character is that you can have all these things, you know, the obstacles of work, family, friends, um, you know, whatever it may be, shit speeding ticket, you know, these things stress you out and cortisol is the enemy of bodybuilding. And it, it's, it's something that you're going to have to deal with. You can't hide from it. You're going to have to deal with stress throughout this process. Not to say that other sports don't have stress, but they don't have stress under deprivation to the extreme that bodybuilding does. Let me be clear. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It, it really says a lot about somebody when they can, you know, have 1200 calories they're doing an hour's worth of cardio uh one or two training sessions a day and then having to walk around with a smile on their face <laughs> come on man you know like listen i understand it's not violent on the surface but the amount of things the amount of you know chaos that is that is in somebody's brain at that point you know anybody could snap you know, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, and underdog talk in the comments, let me know what you think. Well, and we'll bodybuilding is a sport. Let me know what you think is the hardest sport because my vote does go to bodybuilding. Actually, I did my first bodybuilding show and let me tell you, I, I've done a lot of sports in my life and I was only doing a PCA show, but man, and I'm not, I'm no, yeah. Olympian, but man, whoo. That is some mentally tough stuff, and I vote bodybuilding, obviously. Now, my two final questions for you. This is the Underdog Talk podcast. First question, what has been your biggest underdog moment in your bodybuilding career so far? Well, it would be, it'd be easy to say that uh, it was this year's Olympia, um, but I, I, think it's, I think it's a little bit – Deeper than that. I think coming back from COVID and competing. Yep. I had COVID because I actually made it through the whole, you know, sickness thing uh, without getting it. It was actually coming back and returning to bodybuilding. I, I think there's something to be said about carrying momentum. Mm -hmm. um, and COVID shut that down. You know, COVID shut that down. Everybody got comfortable in their houses. You know, when it was all said and done, we can go outside. Hey, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this anymore, you know, but I knew I opportunity that very, very few people on the planet get awarded 
So I, I felt almost selfish to even consider walking away without tapping in. You know, um, felt as if I had much more to give to the sport and that I was right, you know, and that's, that's the gratifying part. But that obstacle of coming back in 2020 to 2021 and then going on to win the Tampa Pro really, you know, that, that was probably the toughest thing that I've faced thus far. Wow. No, I, that is an underdog moment. If I've ever heard one, honestly, just being there where you don't know if you want to do it anymore to winning, to going to the Olympia, to going to the Olympia again. And I'm going to say it one more time, going to the Olympia again and, and just killing it. And obviously being such a great ambassador for the sport in general. So I guess from all of us, thank you for not hanging it up and not hanging up. Those hey, thank and thank you for just doing what you do each day and, you know, making the sport better. And I think they say, make bodybuilding great again. You are making it great again. Um, now my final hey, question, what is your biggest tip for someone who's looking to start bodybuilding like you once were, sir, when, you kind of just got into it. What was the biggest tip you wish you would know? Uh, <laughs> if you get the itch, scratch it. And when I, when I say that, I mean, if you have the notion to actually compete, go through with it, go through with it because you don't want to be left with an if, you know what I mean? Don't, don't leave it to chance. I say you go, you know, and, and actually, discover are you tough enough to really see a prep through the end you know and um you'd be surprised at how many people you know approach a prep and two weeks later they say nah man that, that isn't for me i see it all the time at the gym you know guys gung ho he's like yeah you know i got i got all my food ready i got all my new containers and you know i'm meal prepping see him three weeks later and you know he's got a wendy's bag and i'm like bro what happened you know, I hope that's a cheat meal. They're like, uh, I don't, I don't really have time for it. You know, just say it. Like, I'm, I'm not built for this. Some people just aren't built for it. But if you have the, the notion to do a show, see it through. Yeah. See it through, and you know, just give it hell, man. How many times can you say, Hey, I got to be on stage, looking aesthetically my best in front of hundreds of strangers. And they were cheering for me. Yeah. That might not do it for some, you know, but speaking for myself, I think that, you know, I, I, I love putting myself in that vulnerable position. Yeah. You know, I get rewarded for it. You know, um, it, it, it taps into my, my dopamine senses. So, you know, uh, it's kind of cool. So I try. It's cool. And, and, you know, the biggie, the biggie bag at Wendy's is a pretty good deal, but, but besides, Besides that, you know, obviously, like Kareth said, you know, if you got that itch, scratch it. Get a good, get a good support team with you. You know, get a. If you have never done it, I highly, you know, from my experience, and I'm sure you can uh, agree with me. Get a coach, someone who's done it, someone who knows, um, someone who knows what they're doing, and um, you know, just just enjoy it, enjoy it. And I think that's what it comes down to. You gotta love it. Um, you got to love it and you got to enjoy, enjoy the process of it, as they say, and you got to trust the process, but you got to enjoy the process as well. I mean, the 212 man himself, the apex predator. Now, before we go, what is that Redcon code? I saw you just signed with Redcon. Congratulations. Such an awesome. I've been with Redcon since, um, since last January. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You know, oddly enough, um, Redcom saved me in 2022 to get on stage. I actually had a total war, and that's actually what gave me enough energy to get through the flu. And, um, you know, shortly after, you know, before they even knew the story, it kind of was like kismet. You know, they actually flew me down to Boca, and we did the contract signing. So, yeah, I've been with them for about a year. And, uh, yeah, man, shout out to Redcom. Thank you for, you know, having me on the team. And what's that code that we can use to support you, sir? Oh, the code. Sorry. It's just my name, Kara. K-E-R-R-I-T-H. Simple. 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 And you know what? I love Redcon so much. And we're actually, 
well, I don't know if I should say this yet, but Aaron Singerman is possibly coming on the podcast. So that's, Ooh, that's big. That's in the works right now. So that is a, uh, um, that's big. That is going to be a big one. I love, I love what he does. I think Redcon's an awesome company. And I mean, the MRE light teeth, the banana nut bread guys, you know what? First person to use code Kareth, uh, it's buy one, get one free. And we'll also add the banana nut bread MRE light to your thing. If you use code Kareth, send me that DM. Cause that banana nut bread. Yeah. Oh, that's probably one of the best tasting proteins I've ever had. I'm a blueberry cobbler guy, but I, I cannot lie to you. The, um, the MRE, um, mossy oak. Oh, is it good? Chocolate it's mousse. Good. Yep. Chocolate mousse is, is hands down the best chocolate protein you will ever taste. Wow. I'm telling you straight up. I, I will put a stamp on that. If I'm wrong about it, you've probably lost your taste buds. But I'm, t- I'm telling you, that is the best chocolate tasting protein ever. A little bit of cream of rice, MRE, mossy oak, and some crunchy peanut butter. That's it. You know what? Second person to use code Kareth, send me a screenshot and we will get you a mossy oak MRE light out to you because that does sound sure. really darn good. And I can't, I can't argue with the apex predator on anything because I mean, look at him and look at me and hey. ladies and gentlemen, I mean, the apex predator is in the building. Kareth, you know, best of luck in, in what you're going to do. I know you're going to bring it your, bring your best. And that's just something that you, you strive for. And, um, you know, guys, don't forget to like comment and subscribe on this video. Um, until next time, guys, the apex predator and the underdog out. out. Oh,